Hey friends, how are you today? I hope you're excited for our art project, which is a Koro inspired project today. So if you got a chance to watch the video, I'm sure you got to see those super cool ferns in that really neat fern video. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the lead of the Maori people of New Zealand, which you've been talking about in your history class. And we're gonna go ahead and do a Koro inspired print. Let me give you a little peek. This is kind of what it's gonna turn out like one option in the end. So let's get started. We're gonna start off by doing the Koro spiral. I'm gonna use a pencil and you're gonna go, you wanna make sure that that uh, is kind of gonna be the center point of your design. It can be a little bit off center. So we're just gonna make that spiral all the way around. You wanna make it nice and big and it's gonna go right off the side of the paper, just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna go back in and make the rest of that. So you can see already how that is starting to look like those fiddlehead ferns that are unfurling. So there's one of those. I'm gonna go ahead and put another one right over here and it's gonna go right off the side and I'm gonna do one more right here, okay? So once we have those in there, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and figure out a way to fill the rest of that space. Now in this project, we're talking about value, which means the lightness and darkness of a color. So it doesn't have to do with if we're using yellow, which is lighter, quote unquote, than blue, we're talking about how dark that color is. So I'm gonna continue filling this space in, and I'm gonna fill it in with uh, other lines that are kind of like wavy, nature-inspired lines like that. And if you notice, a spiral is all throughout nature, whether you're talking about shells, whether you're talking about nautiluses, even the inside of a flower. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that in and um, just use some different kinds of fun designs on there, little things like that. And when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and take our black marker. You're gonna fill your paper. I'll show you in a minute what that's gonna look like. And we're gonna go back and start to go over the whole thing with black. So if you feel confident in your design, you can do it with Sharpie right from the beginning. So there we go. So in that case, we probably need to go back and fill it in or I'll show you what else we can do in just a minute. So let me go ahead and move us on to the second part of that design. And you can see on here, we have one core root here, one right here and one right here. And then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've used some other um, fern inspired designs. This is one of my favorites. Let me just show you quickly again how we might do that on here. We're pulling that like this. And remember, what is gonna happen with these ferns is that they're gonna open up into fronds. And so I've just taken that, and it's as if these are little leaf fronds right here, right? So you can see that. And then here, I'm gonna do a different one. I'll draw that line in the middle. And this time I'm gonna put leaf like petioles on each side. And you can see in some of the other designs I have, you're gonna find that, okay? So once we've gone over the whole thing in Sharpie, what we wanna do is add value. And we're gonna do that by darkening up some of those lines. So I'm gonna take this one and just make it a little bit thicker. Now, one thing this is also really helpful for, it's gonna add dimension, it's gonna add value, it's gonna make it a little bit darker. But one other thing that it's gonna do, which is really awesome, is it's gonna kinda help bridge the gap between the colors with your watercolor. Okay, I'm gonna do that. You can just see how even that, it's starting to, to provide a little bit of dimension here. I'm gonna make this a little thicker. I'm gonna do this one a little thicker. I'm gonna do this one a little thicker. Okay, all the way. Uh, these are really important ones to do um, because I want that line to be a little bit thicker on the bottom. Again, that adds value and we do that to add dimension because when things are darker, it looks like they're farther away or there's not light. So it kind of can make it feel like it's creased right here, right? We're gonna go all the way through. Go ahead and thicken up a lot of those lines, okay? Really is gonna make a big difference in our design. You'll see how that looks. These little guys, blacker, thicker. See how this is thicker on one side and not on the other? Again, that adds that dimension and that value, okay? So we're gonna kinda go through that whole thing. <clears throat> and once we've done that, we've completed, we're gonna have something like this. See how we have those darker lines here? Um, and this, some of these are thinner. 
This you can actually see has some white in it. We're gonna go over that with either some paint or some um, colored pencil. So let's show you here how we're gonna do that. <clears throat> Let me move this out of the way. I think this is gonna help us. All right. All right, so you're gonna either take your colored pencils or your crayons here. I use some blues, greens, purples. I'm trying to stick with light colored values. All right, excuse me, with cool colors here. And you're gonna add value depending on how dark you color something in. So I'm gonna take this blue and I'll start right here in these little sections. Can you, I hope you can see these really well. So you wanna start off coloring the whole thing kind of with the same pressure so that it's all the same kind of color value. Then we're gonna go back and I'm gonna just darken this side and then it will continue to just kind of blend in. You can see how that's gonna happen. I'm gonna skip one. I'm gonna color it in again. When you're coloring, you really wanna have something soft underneath. It helps your crayon or your colored pencil strike strokes to be a little bit more even. You can see how it's a little bit darker here. Same thing here. I'm gonna color that whole thing. It's gonna be lighter on the bottom, darker on one side. So again, I'm keeping the darker. I'm adding that value where the black is. You can even kind of go over that if you'd like. All right, I'm gonna fill that in with some green here. Okay, really nice. This one is all even, and then I'm gonna darken up that same side. You can see over here where I was coloring this one in green, I kept that dark shading, that darker value, that higher value close along the edge here, and it goes into the middle so that it's light here. You can see how that adds dimension. Same here on the sides, dark, lighter in the middle. One thing I wanna show you, if you have some watercolors, something kind of fun to do is to mix your watercolor <clears throat> and your um, colored pencils. This is not gonna work as well with crayon because we know we have an issue with crayon resist, but this will blend nicely on here. So I'm gonna start off with this purple pencil and I'm gonna go ahead and color this. And I'm gonna shade along here. Each of these, it's almost as if you're seeing some corners here, right? And I've kind of got some white still going on there. I'm gonna do, I'll show you another one, how that would work, kind of. Make it dark here. And it's nice when you can mix mediums like this. If you can't, you can just use the watercolor and that's gonna work great too. I'll show you what that's gonna look like in a minute. So you can see here how that's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and take my purple, cause that kind of goes with it. And I'm gonna just go right over this. And it's gonna naturally shade because we have that colored pencil underneath. Okay, hopefully you can see this. We've had a lot of technical difficulties today. This is not the first video I've made for you guys. so. Hopefully this will work out and you guys will have some good projects out of this. It is a really fun project, this core room project. It's one of my favorites, okay? So you can see how I'm getting that darker purple down there on that corner. Move my things, this doesn't help blocking you there. Okay. All right. So you can see how it's darker on that corner, so that's gonna provide a little bit of dimension there. If you don't wanna do that colored pencil step, you can just use your paints. And you're gonna start off making them a little bit darker, close to the edge. Make sure you got a lot of good pigment there on your, on your paintbrush. And you're gonna to wanna to kind of fill these sections in one at a time so that you can keep that value there. All right, that dark, along those lines. See how I'm still doing that same kind of, almost like a cornery kind of feel here. Okay, continue doing that. Remember the more water you're adding to your watercolors, the lighter it's gonna be. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, fill that in. There we go. I love these colors. They're nice because they're kind of like forest inspired colors, right? They're cool, nice. 
Whenever we're doing things that are nature-inspired projects, it reminds us that we're really um, following what the Creator has shown us out in the world. That's our probably our greatest inspiration from beauty is God's world. And when we're writing, our great inspiration for beauty is God's word. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. And I'm going to show you one more technique you can do to add value. Okay, so you can see. See how that gives us a little bit of dimension? The final thing you can do that is just another way to do it is it's called a wet on wet method. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper and you're just kind of uh, paint over it with water. Make sure you've got something underneath or you're going to be really disappointed in how things turn out. I'm going to go ahead and take that green. And you're going to see how that naturally adds value. I'm putting that dark green along the side and then that water just washes the color out to the side. I'm going to keep it dark in the middle and it just brings that pigment all the way through. Remember the more water you're adding to your watercolor paints, the less value there is. Remember we've also done this method with, um, with our acrylics. That's a great thing about acrylic paint. You can either use it in a watercolor method. So if you don't have watercolors, you can be using acrylic. Okay, so you can see how it's darker green at the top or at the bottom and it gets lighter as it goes. And again, it gives it that idea of dimension. So as we finish up, this is one of my completed projects here. You can see how that dark green goes along the middle right there and adds some dimension. Over here again, that blue adds dimension right here. That purple is darker. If you're not feeling like you're getting as much as you'd like, one thing you can do is, uh, I'll show you it on this one. Once it dries, you can go ahead and add more paint to it. Just add a little more pigment and you'll see how that allows you to add a little bit more contrast. This is one that had some colored pencil underneath it. And so it just gives us some more contrast when we add another layer of color. Alrighty. So I hope you're ready to add to the beauty at your house today. We add to the beauty through our words, through our actions, through our attitudes. Okay, and there we go. So your core root inspired project, compliments of the Maori tribe of New Zealand. Make sure you're adding to the beauty this week. And oh, one thing I forgot to tell you is that koru, it's a symbol of rebirth and renewal. And it reminds us of 2 Corinthians 5, 17 that says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. I'm thankful for that today. Have a great weekend.